It is 18,000 years ago. The last glacial maximum is ending. For millennia, the British Isles have been buried under ice sheets a mile thick. It is a place of absolute inhospitality. But as the Earth's axis shifts and the sun's warmth returns, the ice begins to melt. Glaciers retreat, leaving behind an open frontier. Into it would come the first people of the New Age. Over the previous hundreds of thousands of years, various ancient humans had lived in Britain during warmer intervals. But they had, each time, been driven off by the inevitable return of ice. By the time the last glacial maximum ended, the land was once again a blank slate waiting for new inhabitants. For decades, researchers believed the story of Britain's recolonization was a simple one. A single group of people arriving, adapting, and slowly evolving their culture as the weather warmed. But, as it turns out, this story is too simple. Thanks to the oldest human DNA ever sequenced from the British Isles, scientists have rewritten everything we thought we understood about the people who populated Britain as the ice retreated. To imagine the world they inherited, we must picture Earth locked beneath a colossal frozen shroud. Between 26,000 and 19,000 years ago, temperatures plummeted, Europe became a frigid wilderness, and ice sheets swallowed Scandinavia and all of Britain tundra and windswept steppe dominated the continent. Only a few refugee zones in southern France, northern Spain, and parts of Italy supported small bands of hunter-gatherers. These communities included Aurignacians and Gravettians, early modern humans who had arrived in Europe a couple of thousand years earlier. By 18,000 years ago, glaciers collapsed in torrents, and new landscapes emerged. Into this transforming world came the Magdalenians, the last major culture of the Upper Paleolithic, flourishing across Europe from about 17,000 to 12,000 years ago. They were highly skilled hunters and tool makers, creating fine blades, antler spear points, bone needles, engraved stones, and stunning cave art. The ice had completely retreated around 16,000 years ago, and a vast landmass surfaced, Doggerland, an enormous plain connecting Britain to continental Europe. Far from a narrow land bridge, it was a huge region of lakes, marshes, woodlands, and rivers, a thriving ecosystem and a natural highway for both animals and humans moving northward. Across this landscape came the first post-glacial settlers of Britain around 15,500 years ago, the Criswellians. These were Britain's local expression of the Magdalenian cultural tradition. They carried harpoons made from reindeer antler and flint blade toolkits. One of the most important sites tied to these early settlers is Guff's Cave in Cheddar Gorge, located in Somerset, England. Excavations spanning more than a century have produced an extraordinary collection of tools, animal bones, and, most haunting of all, human remains bearing signs of ritualistic cannibalism. At least six individuals are represented, from a small child of about three to several adults. Their skulls were shaped into polished skull cups. Cut marks and processing patterns show that these acts were not desperate survival cannibalism, but more of structured mortuary rituals. Another key site is Kendrick's Cave in Wales, which has yielded human remains as well, though here the evidence points to careful burials accompanied by ochre and personal ornaments rather than cannibalistic processing. These remains, dated between 15,000 and 13,000 years ago, represent the earliest known post-glacial population of Britain. And for decades, they were little more than that, bones scattered across a limestone cavern. Archaeologists could only infer so much from them. The deeper truth of who these people actually were remained locked inside the cells of their remains, for years, scientists sought to recover DNA from these Ice Age individuals. It was a task long considered nearly impossible. Britain's acidic soils destroy bone rapidly, and in Paleolithic remains, genetic material often degrades into unrecognizable fragments. Yet as techniques improved, the possibility began to shift from dream to reality. Researchers used high-resolution radiocarbon dating to confirm the precise ages of the remains, then drilled into dense areas like the petrous bone and inner molars, extracting fragments of DNA. Not all remains yielded genetic data, but the ones that did revealed crucial information. The results were remarkable. A woman from Goff's cave who lived around 14,700 years ago, whose bones bore clear signs of ritual defleshing, belonged not to the later Western hunter-gatherer population long assumed to dominate early Britain, but to the far older Magdalenian-associated Goyet Q2 lineage. A lineage, in this context, simply means a genetic group that shared the same ancient ancestors. The Goyet Q2 lineage is named after Goyet Cave in Belgium, where some of the earliest known individuals of this branch were found. These people lived across Europe between 35,000 and 15,000 years ago, and represent some of the oldest modern humans on the continent. Her mitochondrial haplogroup, 
Genetic signatures passed down unchanged from mother to child was U8A. This placed her firmly within this ancient Paleolithic population. U8A is extremely rare today, but during the late Upper Paleolithic, it was common across parts of Western and Central Europe, including Belgium, Germany, and France, consistent with the known Goyet Q2 range. But the second individual, a male from Kendrick's Cave in Wales, dated to around 13,500 years ago, told a dramatically different story. His mitochondrial lineage, U5A2, was one of the earliest branches of a maternal line that would dominate Europe after the Ice Age, particularly in southern and western parts of Central Europe and the Italian and Iberian peninsulas. His genome-wide ancestry matched the Villabruna cluster, also known as Western hunter-gatherers. This group emerged around 14,000 years ago and represented a new genetic wave entering Europe from southeastern refugia, mainly northern Italy, the Balkans, and surrounding regions, as the climate warmed. To simplify, while the Goyet Q2 people, like the woman from Guff's cave, were descendants of Europe's earliest Ice Age humans, the Villa Bruna slash Western hunter-gatherer groups, like the Kendrick's caveman, were from a younger branch of the human family tree, expanding into northern Europe and the British Isles as forests grew and ecosystems transformed. Kendrick's caveman belonged to a population that would later give rise to most Mesolithic hunter-gatherers across Europe. His burial, adorned with ochre and decorated objects, further emphasized a culture very different from the ritual cannibalism practiced by the Magdalenian-derived population found in Guff's cave. The implications were profound. For the first time, science had direct genetic proof that Britain experienced a complete population turnover between 15,000 and 14,000 years ago. The earlier Magdalenian-derived inhabitants left no later descendants on the island. Their genetic line disappeared entirely. The Western hunter-gatherer lineage arrived within centuries and replaced them completely. As the earth warmed during the bowling Alarud period, Britain transformed from an open, icy steppe into dense forests. The Goyet Q2 people, specialized in tundra hunting, lost the environment their way of life depended on. Meanwhile, Western hunter-gatherer groups, skilled forest hunters, expanded through Doggerland and into Britain as new ecosystems opened. These findings directly challenge long-standing theories that early British populations evolved gradually from a single ancestral group. Instead, ancient DNA revealed a far more dynamic human prehistory, one marked by migration of entirely different Ice Age lineages. Most importantly, these discoveries fundamentally rewrite the opening chapter of Britain's human story. They show that the very first post-glacial people were not the ancestors of those who followed, but the last members of a much older lineage a people whose roots lay in the deep Ice Age and whose final presence in Britain was brief and ultimately replaced by the rise of the Western hunter-gatherers. As more excavations continue and technology advances, we can expect even deeper insights into these ancient populations. Thank you for watching. If you found this video helpful, you can like, subscribe, and leave a comment sharing your thoughts. Until next time, keep exploring.